Hello, my name is Nakai Rimmer. Welcome to this set of videos on the integral test and the P-series. I'm here to help you through this journey of trying to figure out whether an infinite series converges or diverges. There are 10 different tests that we need to acquire the ability to be able to use. Three of them are used prior to this, the geometric series, the telescoping series, and the test for divergence. And then in this set of videos, what we do is we learn two more tests, the integral test and a shortcut to it called the P series. So we start off with a function. Uh, that function comes from a, a series. In all of a series, they, they have this formula, A sub N, that you plug in into and out comes a number. Uh, it doesn't have to always start at one, but it is gonna be infinite though. Your job in using the integral test is to replace the N's with X's. This creates a function. And this function will drive the ability of you being able to figure out whether the series will converge or diverge based on what this function does. Now, the function has to satisfy three criteria. Number one is that the function should be continuous. Also, the function should be positive. And thirdly, the function should be decreasing. Now, it might not happen at first. We're going to find out later some, a note about this is maybe it doesn't start at n equals one or doesn't have n equals two, but n equals three on forever. We need to have this, these three properties being true. And so if these three properties are true about the function, which comes from the series, then we can say that the series and the integral on the function behave alike. The series will converge when the integral converges. The series will diverge when the integral diverges. So you have to rely on your integration techniques, but you can find out that these two are connected. Okay, using this test called the integral test. Okay, it might not be decreasing to n equals one or n equals two or n equals three, but eventually you'll, you need to show that it is decreasing or you need to see that it is decreasing. As long as it's decreasing eventually, that's what matters for all n after n equals four or something like that. All right, so let's execute this test on our first example, the easiest example of all. Our series is gonna be a famous series. We discussed it in a previous video. I had to wait till I learned, till I had you guys understand this test before I could show you why that series diverges. That series has a famous name, it's called the harmonic series, it diverges and we're gonna execute the integral test to show why it diverges. N equals one, you have one. N equals two, you have a half. N equals three, you have a third, and so on. And what we have there, the points represent when N is one, the output of A sub N. And N is two, the output of A sub N, okay? And then drawn through there is the function F of X, which is replace the N with the X, and what we get is one over X. This function one over X is continuous. So long as you know, you're from one to infinity. Uh, it's positive as long as you're from one to infinity and it is decreasing. Okay. And so then we can integrate this function, whatever the integral does, so will the series do. Bad grammar there, but you know what I mean? <laughs> the series and the integral, they match as far as the outcome, converge or diverge. How do you integrate one over X? Well, it's just a natural log of X. This is an indefinite, I mean, this is an improper integral. So we have to put a B in officially, let B go off to infinity. But yeah, we get the natural log of B minus the natural log of one, which is zero. But yeah, B is a, uh, B, you know, as, as the input to log increases, then the output increases as well. It is infinite. This integral is infinite. And so because the integral diverges, then we can state by the integral test that the series diverges. The harmonic series diverges. Okay. Using the integral test. Now I want to dig a little deeper so you can understand the, the nature of why it does. Like how is this so nicely tied together with this function one over X? Okay. So let's take a look at that. So this function one over X, we know it fits the criteria. And now let's, instead of, let's look at approximating the area under the graph from one to infinity. 
officially we'll use left endpoint approximations. Okay, so you see the graph there. We'll evaluate on the left each time. That first rectangle area is one. It's a one by one square, although it doesn't look like one. And then we have uh, one half. One half is the height and the width is one. One third is the height and the width is one. And so one plus a third, one plus a half plus a third plus a fourth, they are, the, the sum of those numbers is represented by the purple rectangle areas. On to infinity. This, this stops at 10, but you know, this thing goes on to infinity. What we are looking at then is exactly the harmonic series. And the total area, maybe I should say equals to, why? why? That should not be a squiggly equals, that should be equals to, okay? And, and it's an approximation to the area. So I, I don't know if you can see it, but it's, it's supposed to be shaded in green, the area under the graph. The, um, the graph is one over X, uh, it's black there, the curve. And so um, what we have here, the sum of these purple rectangle areas is more than the area under the curve. Each one is over the amount that it should be for the area under the curve. And so the integral, the area under the curve is smaller than the harmonic series summation. But we know the area under the curve is infinite. So the harmonic series is more than something that is infinite. And that's the why behind this, the scenes when you look at how these are tied together. Just think of approximating. All right. Okay, great. Let's see if we can do the same thing for one over n squared. Okay. And so when n is one, you're at one, but when n is two, now you're at a fourth. When n is three, you're at a ninth. And so it uh, approaches zero much quicker. The function is gonna be one over x squared which is a function that is continuous and it's and it's positive and it's decreasing so long as you're from one to infinity. Now the area under the curve though is not infinite. Small little switch in the exponent there. And now we'll see that the area under the curve is one. This is the antiderivative of x to the negative one. And so what we get is negative one over x and integrating that we put the b in now and that part goes off to zero negative one over b we put the one in negative of negative one becomes plus one this area is one and so the integral converges and if the integral converges then the series also converges and what we're using is called the integral test okay Look at the y behind that. It's the, it's the function again, one over x squared. And we're looking at the interval from one to infinity and we're gonna approximate this. Okay, this time we're gonna switch up and look at right endpoint rectangles. So that first rectangle there has a height of a fourth. It goes up at two. The function at two is a fourth. So that's a fourth plus a ninth plus a sixteenth and so on. That's represented by the blue rectangle areas. Okay. And so this is actually equal to the series of one over n squared, but it starts at two though. But for sure we can state though, that this is an underestimate to, to the area under the graph, right? Each one of these rectangles has less area than the area under the graph. And so what we can say then is that from two to infinity, this summation is smaller than the area under one over x, uh, the un area under one over x squared from one to infinity. Now, technically the series that we were looking at started at one. So we, if we add one to both sides, we'll have exactly that series because the first term would be one and the second term would be a fourth and then a ninth and then a 16th. So add one to both sides of this inequality, it doesn't change it. And so the, series of one over n squared from one to infinity is less than one plus that integral. And we know the integral on the other slide. We saw that that integral is one. So the series for n equals one to infinity of one over n squared is less than two. 
It's because it's less than two that we can say that it converges. So that's what's going on. A couple examples worked out. Hopefully you can see the inner workings behind why the test so closely ties the integral to the series. In the next video, we'll look at a shortcut to this because it's strange, like one over X tied to the one over N harmonic series and one over X squared who's tied to the one over N squared series. That small change in exponent, we got different results and we have to see why, or we have to see a way to shortcut that. We have to ask other questions like what about one over N cubed? Or what about this one over the square root of it? And so we'll look at that in the next video. Uh, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please comment down below or, or reach out to me. Uh, my name is Nakaya Rimmer. I'm here to help. And we'll be um, looking at, uh, I'll, be, I'll be seeing you in the next video. Uh, thank you very much. Like and subscribe and all that other stuff.